one of the reasons I began to do uh, petroglyphs was as I was wandering through the desert and seeing these wonderful designs, I kind of wanted to have one. But knowing they're protected and, and need to remain in place as, as part of the pieces of the puzzle of the past here, um, I, I decided, well, the only way I'm going to get a petroglyph is if I make one myself. These are some of the tools that I use. The smaller stones that would be called anvils or chisels, those are for finer lines or what they call an indirect percussion. So uh, this rock between the hammer stone and the medium I'm working on. I've actually worn this uh, hole in there from the constant action of about 13 years of work with this particular hammer stone. And then the point that I use for directly the direct percussion, which would be directly against the medium I'm working on, is actually worn down about a quarter of an inch. And so a lot of times I actually don't even take um, pictures. I just will take a, a, you know, a draught and, and, or wait, and then halfway back I'll draw it. And that way it's kind of like part me and part what I actually saw. Archaeologists call these little guys anvils. I call them a chisel. <laughs> okay, but it's just a smaller, and what I'm looking for is this rounded point here because uh, I kind of develop a rhythm as I'm pecking the design into there. <sighs> so just removing that uh, varnish layer, which is actually pretty thin, uh, goes pretty quickly. And, and so this is, again, what they would call an indirect percussion because it's not directly against the stone, but there's a stone in between it. And then when I get to the bigger areas, then I'm just going to go ahead and use the direct percussion. <laughs> 